Welcome to Beginning Robotics, a series of videos designed to help teach you how to build a better LEGO robot. My name is Roger Bright. I'm the coach of the Mabry LEGO Destroyers. The Destroyers are the first LEGO League team at Mabry Elementary School in Tampa, Florida. Anyone who's ever participated in a game knows that the fun of a game lies in playing it. But before you can play a game, you have to learn what the rules are and how the pieces work. The same holds true for building a LEGO robot. While you may have spent countless hours putting together many LEGO kits, you may not have spent any time figuring out what each piece does or how they work together. That's what this video is about. When we want to transfer the power from one of the motors on our robot from one place to another, or increase a motor's speed or torque, nothing beats gears. Okay, if you watched the first video in this series, then you really had to see this coming. And if you didn't watch the first video in this series, shame on you. A gear is part of a wheel, section, or shaft with cut teeth of spacing and size that allows them to mesh with teeth in another part to transfer or receive force or motion. I'm sorry, what was that? These are gears, specifically spur gears. Spur gears are wheels surrounded by hard plastic teeth. We distinguish the gears by the tooth count. If you count the teeth on this gear, you will see it has eight teeth, which makes it an eight tooth gear. There are four main sizes of spur gears we will be using in LEGO Robotics. The eight tooth, the 16 tooth, the 24 tooth, and the 40 tooth. By meshing two or more gears together, you can put your motors in one part of the robot and still have them turn wheels or activate attachments in a different part of the robot. In addition to the description of the gear sizes, there are also terms we will be using to indicate the gear's function. For example, the gear that receives energy directly from the power source, such as our NXT motor here, is called the driver gear. Look, before you start groaning, it takes a lot of work to make the jokes this bad. While the gear that receives force directly from the power source is the driver, the gear that receives force from the driver gear is the follower gear. Now at this point I'd like to take a second and look at direction of rotation. In this picture you can see that when the driver turns counterclockwise, it's going to cause our follower to turn clockwise, the opposite direction. Now imagine for a moment that the motor is for the robot's wheels, and I want to program my robot so that the forward direction of my motors is also forward motion for the wheels. What then? How can I make my follower gear turn the same direction as my driver? To accomplish this, I use an idler gear. An idler gear is a gear that is used to keep direction of motion consistent between a driver and a follower. You can also see that I'm using a smaller gear as my idler. This gear is simply transferring power from my driver to my follower and eliminating the change of direction. Now in this setup, the gear doesn't change the force or the speed between the driver and my follower, but that isn't always the case. Like the driver of the car in this picture, I love speed. And by using different gear ratios, remember the ratios from the first video? I can pour on the speed. I do this by gearing up. This means that the number of teeth from my drive gear will be larger than the number of teeth on my follower gear. Here we have a 24 tooth drive gear meshing with an 8 tooth follower. If our drive gear makes one rotation, it will cause our follower to make three rotations, since each individual tooth of the driver has to mesh with a single tooth on our follower. In other words, our follower is going three times faster than our drive gear. This is gearing up. To determine the gear ratio, we compare the number of teeth on our drive gear, 24, to the number of teeth on our follower, 8 giving us a ratio of 24 to 8, or simplified 3 to 1. If our drive gear was a 40 tooth gear, then our ratio would have been 5 to 1. In other words, our follower would be moving 5 times faster than our drive gear. Now suppose that the follower gear is on a larger axle that also has wheels on it. That axle and those wheels would be going 5 times faster than the drive gear. At this point, I want you to stop the video. No, seriously, pause it. Go find some Legos, grab some gears and some axles, and play around with the gearing up concept that I just talked about. 
because no amount of narration can make this any clearer than actual hands-on experimentation. So go ahead and pause it. I'll be here when you get back. If instead of speed we're looking to increase the amount of torque that our motor is producing, then we want to gear down. In this picture, our drive gear is now an 8-tooth gear, and our follower is a 24-tooth gear. This means that for every rotation our drive gear makes, our follower will only move one-third of a rotation. Our gear ratio is now 1 to 3. Okay, you can see it's moving more slowly, so what else? What's the use of this? To understand this part, you need to understand torque, and you need to understand one more thing. This is a test of the Nerd Alert system. You are about to be exposed to high levels of scientific nerdiness. The scientific law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can change forms. In our case, the power from our motor can't be created or destroyed, just changed. When we gear up, we visually see that we are increasing our speed. But what do we lose? And if we lose speed by gearing down, what is it that we're gaining? The answer is torque. In our picture we see a weightlifter exerting force, pushing it against an object in a straight direction, in this case the object being weights. Torque is force that's acting on an object that is rotating, like a wheel on an axle. To answer our earlier question, when we gear down, when we lose speed, we increase torque. Now that we've made our 8-tooth gear the drive gear and our 24-tooth gear the follower, we have flipped the ratio. We now have a ratio of 1 to 3. This means our follower is able to apply three times the force as our drive gear. You would want to use a gearing setup like this where your robot needs more strength than the motor has to offer, such as lifting a heavy object or increasing the pushing power of your robot's wheels or treads. Just like last time, I want you to stop and experiment with gearing down. A word of caution, however, it is really easy to get a nasty pinch from even a simple Lego motor if you gear down too much. Just as you were making your follower gear five times as fast as the motor when gearing up, you would be increasing the torque, or the amount of force the motor is capable of, by five times the amount by gearing down in the same way. This can easily result in possible injury, so be careful, and make sure mom or dad are around to be safe. Up until now we've only been using spur gears, but there are a few other types of gears that you may want to use in your Lego building. Bevel gears allow you to change the direction of force 90 degrees. If your drive gear was coming from the top, for example, but you wanted to transfer the force to a propeller on the back of your bot, you may want to use a pair of bevel gears. Or you might want to use a crown gear, such as the one seen here. The crown gear's teeth turn down and allow it to mesh with the top of a spur gear for a more secure fit. Another type of gear you'll often see is the rack gear. Rack gears are flat bars with teeth on them. They can be used as a track for gears to ride on, or they can transfer rotational torque to force in a straightforward direction. Lastly, the final gear we're going to look at is the worm gear. All I can say is I'm sorry. The worm gear is a special gear that uses a single continuous groove instead of teeth. Worm gears are great to use where you want to avoid slippage. Let's say that you want to lift something up and be sure that it will stay there until you want to lower it again. Since a worm gear can turn a spur gear, but a spur gear can't turn a worm gear, a setup like the one pictured would be perfect. A drawback to using worm gears is the fact that there is a lot of energy lost due to friction the rubbing that occurs between the spiral tooth of the worm and the individual teeth of the spur gear. This can result in a loss of power and sometimes damage to the gears. The most important thing is to have fun. Be creative. Experiment. No matter what problem you encounter, don't just find the solution. Have fun doing it.